When thinking about a place to go for entertainment, the first thing that comes to mind is going to the movies. To accommodate this, numerous modern cinemas have been built in North York over the last 80 years. There was no movie theater in North York until 1948. Willow, the first one, was opened June 18, 1948 on the southeast corner of Young and Norton Avenue in the Willowdale area. It was constructed to serve the needs of the new suburban residential area that was developing after the Second World War. Willowdale was also a popular place to move for veterans returning from World War II. Due to its low cost in housing, combined with ease of access to convenient transportation downtown, residential and commercial growth in North York brought increased numbers of people to the area, leading to more permanent residents than the place had ever seen. The establishment of the Willow filled the void left by the absence of an entertainment center in North York after World War II. In this photo, you can see the lines of people around the block coming for the theater's double features, as it was one of the last Toronto area theaters to run a double. We have no related information about why the movie theater was named Willow, but a common assumption is that it was in the community of Willowdale. The Willow is a symbol of loss and hope. In the spiritual world, Willow really played a role in leading people out of the shadow of World War II and into a new life full of hope. From 1948 until 1987, the Willow Movie Theater brought great pleasure to local people for 40 years. Its influence wasn't only limited to North York. People who lived in Thornhill, Richmond Hill, and Scarborough also came to see movies there. The movie theater continued screening films longer than most neighborhood theaters in the city. It remained an independent theater until its closure in 1987. The Willow impacted the older generations. Even though it closed city five years ago, some have fond memories of the theater that they passionately relate with their youth. Time flies, but people's affection for the Willow Movie Theater never fades away. Their emotion towards it not only connected them to remember happy times online, but they also provided information and details about the Willow Theater through their comments and articles. Through their comments and articles online, the Willow Theater's image became clearer and revived. The Willow Movie Theater was a landmark in the community with its prominent vertical sign. Originally, that sign was fancier in the shape of a letter P. Then, the vertical sign changed to be a distinct yellow tiled marquee trimmed in red, plus a tall vertical sign that said in yellow vertical letters on a red background on each side, W-I-L-L-O-W, -L -L creating an island of color on North Young Street. No one could miss it. The proposal for the theater was submitted to the city in the autumn of 1945 by the architect Herbert George Duer. Duer was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and moved to Ontario in 1911. By the mid-1930s, Duer had adopted a progressive, modernist aesthetic for his work and caught the attention of the famous player's theater chain. They hired him as their corporate architect to design many movie theaters in towns and cities across Ontario, including the Hollywood Theater, the Scarborough Theaters, the Village Theater, and the Willow Movie Theater. He was also well known for designing the village apartments at 404 Spadina Avenue in the Forest Hill Village. The Willow Theater's design was ahead of its time, featuring an enormous glass window and simplistic decoration. Many remember the Willow's giant glass brick window. A similar rendition of the bricks was found on the side of another building in the Royal Legion. The theater and the Legion were built one year apart from each other, so it's possible that the same material was used to make the glass blocks. Fortunately, Linda Woodhunt, a former North York resident, has three original glass blocks from the Willow. Linda's parents immigrated to Canada in 1954 and lived near Park Home Avenue in North York. 
from 1967 until 1995. According to her 92-year-old mother, Linda's father picked up the glass blocks during the demolition of the theater to remember the theater by. We express our gratitude to Linda's family for their care and attention towards the glass blocks. The light fixtures on the wall that I remember that you could see that, you know, they were they're kind of glowing. There was lights in behind them and they, they would glow out. When I went to the movie the other day, it was the owner's friend that was at the ticket booth. And he said that the drapes or curtains from the Willow Theatre is in one of their theatres. It contained almost a thousand seats and two aisles situated against the side walls. Each row contained 34 to 35 seats and had a 40 inch wide legroom, leading to the theatre boasting that it possessed continental seating. The aisles from what I remember were really wide. I mean, you know, you know, good three, four feet across at least. Seats were massive, I mean, tons and tons of room in there. You didn't have to fight with the, the person beside you. You know, armrests, uh, the whole thing, just nice, big, comfortable, cushy seats. I mean, it was built for, for luxury. And uh, you know, that's what I remember about the, the, uh, the seats back then. And I believe there were, there were lights on the odd seat. I think every fifth seat had a light to kind of illuminate the, uh, the aisle. But, I have pictures of the chairs from my mom's basement and a picture of my parents sitting in the willow seat at the last showing of a movie there. There is a couple in front of them. My parents are in the row behind and are left Annie Doherty Ravica and Charles Chuck Alexander Ravica. The Willow Movie Theater had a smoking section in the last four rows, but in its opening program, it says, Smoking in the last 10 rows is highlighted in an advertisement. In kids' eyes, it had the best washroom, and the ladies loved the huge mirror in the ladies' room. The super cooling system was also an attractive point to people. The Willow Theater, they had the best popcorn in the universe. Lot, had real butter, lots of salt. And the popcorn came in uh, rectangular boxes. They had uh, soft ice cream. They brought in soft ice cream, like Dairy Queen, standard cones. And of course, the best soft drinks, Coke, Pepsi, ginger ale. The Willow opened at 6.30 p.m. on June 18, 1948, with many dignitaries in attendance, including North York Mayor George G. Mitchell. The opening program featured The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, starring Danny Kaye and Walt Disney's Song of the South. In the 1970s, advertisements about the theater's movies appeared on the Toronto Star. The Willow traditionally waited for blockbusters and big movies to uh, finish their run downtown, and then they would bring it up to the Willow and show it there. Uh, so it became a tradition when we would see movie trailers on TV and, and uh, tell our parents that we wanted to see that movie. And our parents always used to say, no, you can wait till it comes to the Willow. So that was, uh, everybody waited until it came to the Willow. And when the blockbuster came, Norton and Parkview were jammed with cars as far back as Willowdale Avenue, north and south side jammed with cars and of course the parking lot was filled as well the last movie played at the willow was the rocky horror picture show many people recall it to be the most interesting and fun night of their life according to the article toronto's old willow movie theater at 5269 young street by doug taylor in december 1958 the film peyton place was screened at the willow in the 1950s, it was considered a shocking film. There was a considerable outcry from the citizens of Toronto the Good against the movie when it played at theaters across the city. They would have uh, late night Halloween movies, the horror movies, cheap horror movies. And it was packed all the time, 
all the time it was packed and kids loved it and uh, the high school kids would uh, would uh, yell out comments uh, from their experience with literature at school and plays and I remember a number of times kids would yell out foreshadowing you know or whatever like that uh, that was always fun for them but, uh, we saw all the all the old classic vampire uh, werewolf uh, Frankenstein uh, some of them were uh, with uh, Abbott and Costello uh, Abbott and Costello was a big a big hit uh, uh, with the Willow Theater and of course all the Jerry Lewis all the Elvis Presley movies On the website related to the Willow Movie Theater, many people said that the Willow is the first movie theater they visited and they watched the first movie in it. This experience is so marvelous that they like to mention it again and again to share this wonderful memory with other people. It was a big theater, or at least to me it felt like a big theater, and it had these amoeba-like creatures along the walls, and it just was this huge cave-like place um, and I just I do remember um, feeling a thrill of watching a movie in that theater. My parents took me to see my very first movie there. I was about seven years old. The movie they took me to see was The Sound of Music. That movie remains to this day my favorite movie. That was a very very fond memory and one of my earliest memories I have as a child actually. My first movie was Elvis Presley I believe it was Jailhouse Rock. That was, as far as I can remember, that was my first uh, real movie at the Willow. My brother Richard was working that day, and they had a little floor, a little floor show. The MC was looking to hand out some prizes, and the lights were halfway up. He pointed over to me to come down and get a prize of some kind. I was too shy. My brother told me, "No, go on down." I said, "No, I'm not going down there." Lawrence Allen was the first manager of the Willow, who lived on Hollywood Avenue. Mr. Allen was a very nice man. Allen was a common conversion name in the movie business due to the Allen brothers, pioneers in the Canadian movie industry. Marguerite Durham, cashier at the Willow for many years, became the manager of the Willow. She served in that capacity until November 29, 1987, when the last show was screened. From comments on Facebook, we get to know the fallen people working in the Willow, but we can't provide every person's exact time when they worked there. Bill Robinson was head usher, and Mark Miller worked the ticket office. Mark Mayer was the first assistant manager. Gene Walls worked on the candy counter there in 1956. Gordon McLeod worked there as a relief projectionist. Steve Dyer was assistant manager there in the early 80s. There was a parking lot just behind on Norton Avenue for the people would park cars. The manager of the theater asked me if I would have, have a job of parking the cars in the parking lot, a little flashlight. And from 6.30, 6 o'clock till nine o'clock, I would park cars. People that owned the theater were quite friendly. The people that they had working for them were great. Many of us male Willowdale types had the joy and pleasure working at the Whittle Theater for Mr. Allen, and he was a very nice man. One important job of the Willow Theater usher was to raise and lower the screen legs. And I was always the person who had to climb the top of the screen at the back and haul the legs up. It was a difficult and somewhat dangerous job. It was easy to fall. Often the, the uh, jobs as usher included changing the marquee and carrying uh, steel cans of film down to the front of the willow and taking the new ones back up. When I worked uh, there over the winter of 55-66, it cost 15 cents to get into the Saturday matinee. And since a cup of coffee at the Northway restaurant was 10 cents, Admission to the show was pretty cheap. I was paid 40 cents an hour and considered myself fortunate. 
I got to work about 15 hours a week, which included uh, all day Saturday and some evenings. Being a, an usher was a ticket to meet girls, and that part of the job was really worth the downside. Mark Durham was the lady who, who sold the tickets. Many a time, kids would be lined up, and sometimes Mark would be delayed. When she got off the bus, everybody cheered and clapped because finally Marg was showing up and she didn't waste any time if she was late. She went right in, opened the, the slide and started the machine running and the, and the tickets would pop up and then you'd just pull it and take your ticket, go in and the, uh, the usher would tear it in half and put it in the, the tall metal box. They, it was a real blessing uh, to have that, thanks to the Allen family. Uh, they were a great, uh, a great family. Really, really assisted in the uh, in the upbringing and and the, in a lot of cases the protection of the children while the parents were busy at home. Yeah, it was uh, it was really a real real blessing to have that that theater there. And it was it became a tradition Saturday. Parents loved sending the kids to the to the to the willow, and told them to stay as long as they want. So sometimes we'd stay and watch the movies again, just to stay out of our parents' hair before the movie started. Uh, everybody stood up. Everybody stood up for the national anthem. Yes, yeah, Saturday matinees were were pure bedlam. The place filled to overflowing with kids paying fifteen cents to see a double feature always a double feature and usually not knowing what was playing kids uh, never cared about what was playing the goal of the show on saturday was what was uh, it was all about and once there if the movie was boring you could screw around and chase girls and bother other people and congregate in the lobby there were never any elders at the saturday matinees they, they had better sense than to go and popcorn was sold uh, in a small cardboard box. The fun was pushing the ends in and making the box flat, and then throwing them like a frisbee at the screen. And in addition to that, uh, kids would put their feet on the seat in front of them and push and shake, which was true, uh, whenever there was uh, nobody in the seat or somebody, even if somebody was in the seat. And a lot of times you'd have fights, and as an usher, I'd have to walk down the aisle with my light and break up the fights. Teenagers and older guys uh, loved to come to the show with the girl. Uh, they didn't cause any trouble. They were too busy looking after the girls uh, that they came with. And when the movies were over on Saturdays, kid was, kids would explode out the side of the door, and Mr. Allen would try and stop them. He was afraid that, they, that kids that were waiting outside and would mix with the kids leaving, and they would sneak into the theater. Uh, and he was always worried, worried about that. And then uh, coming out from the darkness into the light was always a, a fun thing. You were squinting because you'd been inside the Willow Theater for God knows how long and picking popcorn out of your teeth and <laughs> it was great. A great release, a great place. And of course it was only just down the street from us. So it was, uh, it was, uh, a real blessing to have it there for kids in our area. I had found out through the news back in the late 70s that uh, where I was living in Willowdale was going to be revamped. A lot of the old buildings were going to be torn down and replaced with new structures. And so I thought, well, I should go around and photograph whatever it is that I could photograph. So I photographed Dempsey's, the post office, the old police station, fire hall, Willow, just to name a few to start with. I was experienced in silkscreen printing and there was a method using dots on plastic to make a plate, print it and then hand color them. I made sure that whatever the cost was to produce one print was covered so that I could use that money to produce the next one. Well, I have a, I have a seat from the Willow Theatre that, uh, that I won in a raffle um, when I was uh, 
when I went to an art show by um, uh, a Willowdale artist who had done painted a picture of the Willow Theater, um, which I also have. I, it was uh, the artist was Charles Dowson, and uh, I really loved his art. Uh, in fact, I have um, three of them. I think uh, two of them are owned by the city. I, I you know, the city paid for them, and one that I uh, own myself. But I also have a, a Dempsey store uh, painting of his and uh, Ming's variety store. In 1954, Willowdale United Church, now known as Willowdale Emanuel United Church, was building the new church at Kenneth Avenue. The service was held at Willow Movie Theater every Sunday. Wally Coaster lived in Willowdale and was a frequent customer at the Willow. The theater's staff were thunderstruck when he came to the theater. He was considered quite a celebrity in those days. Mr. Coaster lived in Ellerslie and was a co-star on the CBC TV show, Cross Canada Hit Parade. In March 1957, stink bombs were set off for three weeks during Friday evening shows until the police arrested a 17-year-old boy. Stink bombs were a common problem in Toronto area theatres in this era. There were also break-ins at the Willow to steal cigarettes in large quantities from the snack and cigarette counter. memories of the Willow Theater, the first being that it was um, my first date, um, and I think it was 1967 or 1968. I remember the um, movie was uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and it must have gone well because there was a second date after that. <laughs> Best friend and I decided to go to the Willow on October the 31st, 1958, to see a midnight horror movie. We were sitting there waiting for the show to start when we heard somebody call a few rows back, and it was a girl that he knew, and she was accompanied by another girl. He had known her previously. Her name was Betty White. Being young teenagers, uh, we asked them to come down and sit with us in the uh, theater for the movie, and so they did. And Betty, knowing my friend Duncan, sat with him, and this other girl, whose name was Gloria Fox, sat with me. We uh, saw this uh, horror movie on, on Halloween night, and then I think around three o'clock in the morning, we drove them home. At the time, I was taking flying lessons at the uh, Toronto Flying Club, so uh, I asked them if they wanted to go to a dance there the next night. And so we went to a dance, and that girl, uh, I eventually married, uh, and we've been married now for 59 years. So I met my wife at the Willow Theater. The Willow Movie Theatre is North York's first movie theatre and has a significant place in North York history. Given the timing of its opening, right after World War II, it probably brought a lot of much needed happiness to those in North York. And I'm sure the experience in the Willow Movie Theatre became an unforgettable memory for the generation of baby boomers in North York. Historically, the address of the Willow Movie Theatre is 5,269 Young Street, on the southeast corner of Young Street and Norton Avenue. Now, a commercial building is located at its original site, and the address is changed to 5,255 Young Street. If you search 5,269 Young Street on Google Maps, it shows you Young Street. It's very sad to recognize that the Willow Movie Theatre and its address have disappeared in real life. The North York Historical Society fondly remembers the Willow Theatre and what it meant for the community of Willowdale and North York. The North York Hist Historical Society is an active group of community members passionate about preserving and promoting North York history. The Society discovers, disseminates, and preserves historical information 
protects heritage sites and arouses interest in the unique past of North York. We aspire to let more people remember and acquaint themselves with local history. We wish to record more local history for future generations to learn from. We would like to thank Grace and her team for creating this wonderful documentary on the Willow Theatre, bringing to light many fond memories. Lastly, we offer this documentary as a gift to North York Centennial. Thank you for your support.